I am a naturally introverted person. I've often struggled with anxiety and stress and in the past I've often associated this with the stress of city life, with the social anxiety of being around so many people in such a busy space and a busy area. I'd hoped that coming to somewhere so remote and so beautiful as where we are now in northern Sweden would magically alleviate these worries and experiences which I'd had. And I think what I've learned is that the mind is a very powerful thing. It's more powerful than your physical situation. And believe it or not, I've still found many ways to be stressed and anxious since being here. That said, the peace and the nature to be found here is certainly helpful in dealing with these things. Whilst it takes work, being amongst the trees and the quiet does also help you to get perspective and to quieten your mind. There's no doubt in my mind that my appreciation for the smaller things in life has increased in my time living here. My appreciation for nature, my appreciation and enjoyment of seemingly mundane tasks such as mowing the lawn or blowing the snow. I find peace in these moments of sort of living and and I feel that it, whilst it is easier to connect with these experiences and to be more present in this rural environment, it certainly is not impossible to do so in other environments. And I hope that when my environment changes again, I'm able to continue to cultivate these feelings and the appreciation for the present and the beauty in wherever I happen to find myself. What I have come to realize is you can escape your current location in search for peace of mind and happiness, but your mind is inescapable and follows you to your new destination. As soon as we left London, we left the routines that brought us happiness behind too, expecting for the inner work to be easier once we got to this magical countryside. I'm not gonna lie, when I came to Sweden, I thought I'd be living my best Yonne Yunton life. I thought I'd be running in fields, taking ice baths, calling cows. But all of that actually takes some willpower. You have to make the decision to run in the freezing cold and to take that cold ice bath. I wasn't about that life. We have learnt, however, and continue to learn that we cultivate our own happiness and our peace. We have learnt that Happiness is found wherever you are. Although it may be possible to cultivate a feeling of happiness wherever you are, your environment is also important. You can sow really good seeds, but if the environment of the soil is not conducive for growth, that seed won't grow. And that's the same with happiness. There is a need sometimes to change your environment and to find somewhere that is more fulfilling and more enriching. Which part for you do you feel is lacking? Are you sowing the seeds of happiness or is your environment just not conducive to the growth of the seeds that you are sowing? We have learned that happiness and peace comes when you make the choice to take the awe-inspiring walk, to play in the snow, to leave your phone behind and take time to enjoy the small things. Okay, go. Skiing on your driveway. How was that? Right. Finding the best sledge. My entry, a baking tray.
Lord. From nope. Skyrim. <laughs> nope, that does not that's not gonna work. <laughs> Not try this at home. Seasons are a great reminder of the temporality of this world. The only one true constant in life is that change will happen. But even within the seasons and the constant changing, there is a hidden pattern. There seems to always be a time to grow and build, a time to bloom and enjoy, and a time for death and rest. Even though we know this change is inevitable, the seasons can be late. Just like in life, a low or a high may last longer than expected, but that's not to say it will stay the same forever. Change will always come. I must admit, in coming to Sweden, there was a sense of loss I experienced. I knew that in coming here, I would no longer be able to graduate with my friends, friends that I had made and cultivated relationships with over the last five years. While it may come later than planned, the appointed time at which your life falls into place will always be perfect for you. And each season brings with it something new and beautiful to experience. Summer has its long bright days. Autumn has the great colours and leaves. Winter has the crisp snow and stillness and spring has beautiful flowers. The seasons give us contrast. When the summer comes, it's all the more enjoyable because you've seen through the cold winter. Live and love the contrast. In all, we have abandoned the quest for complete happiness because in finding it without the contrast, we would be unable to recognize and enjoy it. What we can do, however, is plant the seeds of happiness and pray for a big harvest when the time is right. For us, this means exercising, eating healthily, being mindful and cultivating a space conducive to the growth of our happiness. But most importantly, we take each season of life and find something beautiful. There is beauty in despair. For us, it triggers self-reflection, induces greater patience and awakens gratitude by reminding us of the fragility of life. The world is so beautiful in a way that our man-made creations can never quite compete. It has this transformative power to make you stop in awe. I see nature no longer as merely functional, but beautiful too. Living in Sweden, I'm beginning to think more and more that perhaps beauty is one of nature's primary functions. I have found myself crying more than once in the stillness and the beauty of the forest, unable to completely comprehend the perfection in the chaos. I now see the power that beauty can have on our experiences of the world and I am encouraged every day to do the little things that make each day beautiful. Until coming to Sweden, I never noticed that snowflakes were actually flakes of snow. I never felt snow up to my knees. I never felt the sensation of snow melt under my bare foot. But these are all experiences that just awake you, that make you stop, that bring you to life and help you to become present. <laughs> it's been snowing one night and... <laughs> It's up to my knees. <laughs> where's your Oh my god, where is your knee? Take your foot up. Take it up. Come on. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and our house is there. 
<laughs> I should have worn my salopex. <laughs> Did we say we live in the mountains? Nah. Live in the hills? <laughs> a man's work is a manifestation of his individual spirit. I never quite understood Marx's theory of alienation until coming to Sweden. One of the most fulfilling aspects of coming to Sweden has been transforming our house into a home. There is a childlike wonder in the exploration and the working with your hands and tools to craft an item that is so intertwined with your personality that it almost becomes an extension of who you are. The joy in creating something that you deem to be beautiful, something of utility, for you and by you. I have experienced how alien and separate we really are from our labour. When we buy things, for example, we lose the joy of producing an item that is unique to our character. There is this constant satisfaction I get when I look or use our kitchen island. It's a knowing and an enjoyment that I have been able to satisfy my needs by my own work. I understand it can be easier to buy things. I wonder how much creativity we lose because of our current system. Since being here, we have noticed people go out of their way to help one another, banding together to solve each other's problems. Because there are far less people, there is a far greater sense of support and friendliness to be found. I grew up feeling very dissatisfied with the way the world worked. I was dissatisfied with people having less than they needed to survive whilst others had more than they needed to survive and it just didn't make sense to me. As I grew older I realised that there was something a little futile in complaining and I made it my mission to be the change I wanted to see. I have always thought that to lead a meaningful life you have to be able to impact other people's lives in a big meaningful way and I felt that living somewhere rural and recluse was almost selfish. I now see that living in a rural place is not isolating. I see the healing and the community spirit that can be found and cultivated in rural places.